that celebration is everybody knows what they're in for. We're gonna have married, we're gonna have the honeymoon, then we're gonna be married. But that celebration, the party that you're planning for in today's society is it's intense. It's really intense. We, it's the biggest party most people will ever plan. It doesn't matter if you're planning a $2,000 event or a $200,000 event. It's usually the biggest party anyone in a family will throw. It used to be in cultures, just in the past hundred years, we've lost it. There would be parties in communities all the time. And you'd have the celebratory factor for seasons or special events in the community. And now it all boils down to the one big event. And it's for women, it's their chance to look their most beautiful. They want to be their skinniest. They want to be their most radiant. They, they go tanning, they get their nails done. They do more to make themselves beautiful than they will ever do for one single day in their entire life. And then it's over and you don't get to focus on you and being beautiful and being happy. And it's all about, okay, now life sets in. And how do you deal with the fact that the party was the party? And yes, we want those because we want to celebrate marriages and they're important. But that's a party for happiness and a marriage is for joy. And it takes a long time to create that joy. Um, can it be described as a depression for some people? For some people, it really can. Especially if, um, if they kind of didn't understand what it would be like living with someone for the first time. Um, it's, it's funny, um, people that are, are chased before marriage have more difficulty um, with the adjustment of living together, but then they get the bonus of the cookie of having this opening of a whole sexual relationship that they didn't experience. Whereas people that are sexually intimate before marriage don't have the cookie of intimacy to kind of make that first year go nicely, but they also, um, they they have more of a reality of what it's like to live with people. So it just depends on where you're coming from with your belief system and what you've decided for yourself. Now, I can say all the things about, you know, um, just stay focused on the relationship, but it's really hard when, you know, every day is picking colors and doing you know, all the things that come with weddings. The biggest thing you can do to, um, to just ease that transition is to plan to have a lot of nice time with your spouse, period. Um, Cleaning the house is not as important. Opening the gifts is not as important. Sending the thank you notes is not as important as having nice time with them. I don't care if it's, you know, shut off the phone, lock the door and have special intimate time. If you'd like to go on dates, if you like to read together. There, I, I brought them here. There's two books that I recommend. Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work in the Five Love Languages. Um, these are great to go over with your spouse before and after marriage. They have some exercises that you really get to know each other. And that's what happens is um, up until the wedding, it's all about the wedding and it's all about romance and love. And then, oh, it's the nitty gritty. And now we've got to make, we've got to make doing the budget sexy. We've got to make all these things that are going to create the core of a healthy, um, vibrant, stable, because, you know, we, we downplay it in our society, but gosh, give me stability. I want to know where our paychecks are coming from. I want to know where our food's coming from. All those things start setting in and you want to be able to have that dialogue before there's a crisis or it's going to be really stressful. Now, all of those things happening right after marriage is a lot, but, but those things like, what are your dreams? What have you been passionate about in the past? What, what was your favorite memory from high school, from middle school? What have you enjoyed doing in the past that you don't do now? Why? All those questions that might not come up in courtship, start asking them. And they have some great questions in those books, which yeah, the, is why I recommended them. Both pastors we talked to talked about communication. That's cliche. It's so cliche, but it's, it's so true. Everything comes down to communication. It yeah. really does. That first year is really critical. And that letdown, it's the more emotion you invest in being the center of attention, and the, diff the more difficult it can be for you to no longer be the center of attention. So you've really got to um, prep yourself for, I I'm part of a unit now. It's no longer all about me and walking down the aisle or doing whatever it is you want to do. It's all about how do we have happiness together? How do we look beautiful together? How do we feel good together? Your point about uh, planning for a nice time together is something I've seen before. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, 
I, I hear it talking about a lot of couples who've been married a long time. You know, we have a date night. Mm -hmm. It's important for the newlyweds to have date night right out of the shoot. It really, really is because, like I said, there are so many different things to get overwhelmed with. You know, you're probably settling into a new place or opening packages or whatever it is that diverts your time. And it's really easy to get snippy. There's different ways that people deal with stress. And um, the best way to deal with stress is to be stressed and just kind of what I call, it's kind of the Buddhist way, just sit in it and just be calm and steadfast. Most people, or most husbands, most wives, will revert to why aren't you doing this, like little snips, little whatever, and then you escalate that stress level. Now, you've just come off a very stressful event planning, and you just said, oh, okay, after the wedding, everything will be better after the wedding. Now, if you're snipping at each other before the wedding, and then the snipping doesn't stop after the wedding, that's a really bad formula. That's, that's setting it up for, well, when will the snipping stop? But this sounds like it's more of uh, the female part of this than the men. Not that that's right or wrong, right. but women are dealing with this more than men, aren't they? They really are. It's, it's the princess day, and the past 20 years, Disney has successfully sold the princess story, and a wedding day is your day to be a princess. That's what every woman, to some you know, different varying degrees, buys into. It's your special day. Now, yes, I am not saying not to be a princess on that day, but then... Even in all the fairy books, the princess takes off her crown and she deals with the royal life afterwards, just like this wedding that's coming up that you guys are doing this whole thing for. It's going to be wonderful and then there's going to be all sorts of things to deal with afterwards.